friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, and not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus oft told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously half seas answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest. For Brutus is an honorable man. So are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. To this and Caesar seem ambitious, when at the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? Oh, judgment! Thou art fled to Brutus' beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me, my heart is in the coffin now with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. But yesterday the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now lies he there, and none so poor to do him reverence. Oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong and Cassius wrong, who you all know are honorable men. I will not do them wrong. I rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself in you, than I will wrong such honorable men. But here's a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. Let the comments hear this testament. Which, pardon me, I do not mean to read. And they would go and kiss dead Caesar's wounds, and dip their napkins in his sacred blood. Yea, beggar heaven for many, and die and mention it within their wills, bequeathing it as a rich legacy unto their issue. Have patience, gentle friends. I must not read it. It is not meet you know how Caesar loved you. You are not wood. You are not stones. But men. And being men, hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you. 
it will make you mad. Tis good you know not you are his heirs, for if you should, oh, what would come of it? Will you be patient? Will you stay a while? I have overshot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear You will compel me then to read the will. Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar, and let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend, and will you give me leave? If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. You all do know this mantle. I remember the first time Caesar ever put it on. It was on a summer's evening in his tent. That day he overcame the Navii. Look in this place, ran Cassius's dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this, the well-beloved Brutus stepped, and as he plucked his cursed steel away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it, his rushing out of doors to be resolved if Brutus so unkindly knocked or no, for Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, O oh, you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, in gratitude, more strong than traitor's arms, quite vanquished him, then burst his mighty heart, and in his mantle muffling up his face, even at the base of Pompey's statue, which all the while ran blood. Great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen. And I, and you, and all of us fell down whilst bloody trees and flourished over us. Oh, now you weep, and I perceive you feel the dint of pity. These are gracious drops. Kind souls, what weep you when you but behold our Caesar's vesture wounded? Look you here, here is himself, marred as you see with traitors. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden blood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have. Alas, I know not that made them do it. They are wise and honorable, and will no doubt with reasons answer you. I come not, friends, to steal away your hearts. I am no orator, as Brutus is. But as you know me all, a plain, blunt man that love my friend, and that they know full well they give me public leave to speak of him. For I have neither wit, nor words, nor worth, 
action, nor utterance, nor the power of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on. I tell you that which you yourselves do know. Show you sweet Caesar's wounds, poor, poor, dumb mouse, and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus, and Brutus Antony, there were an Antony would ruffle up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny. <laughs> Friends, you go to do you know not what. Wherein half seas of us deserved your loss. Alas, you know not. I must tell you then. You have forgot the will I told you of. Here is the will. And under seas are sealed. To every Roman citizen he gives. To every several man. Seventy-five, darkness. Hear me with patience. More of more. He has left you all his forks, his private hours, and new planted orchards on this side. 